if you want to use anything for today's class it might be a block and of course the things that make you comfortable for relaxation other than that we will begin in a seated form and if you want to um, yourself to be supported maybe the block comes in handy so i will uh, sit in uh, hero pose or virasana today um, just so because it flows nicely from there but if you feel this is causing you trouble in your knees and your hips or ankles um, please feel free to sit in a different way um, one way of making this a little bit more accessible is potentially a stack of blocks uh, that can uh, release some of the pressure from the knees if you experience any and um, once you come to sit, please start um, shuffling around a little so that you find a place in which you can sit uh, reasonably comfortable. When uh, you are ready, please close the eyes or if you don't enjoy doing so, steadying your gaze at eye height, uh, not against the screen, but against uh, something that doesn't move and allows your mind to settle. We'll take a deep in breath together and lifting the arms up over the head. Touching the palms of the hands together and drawing that down in front of our heart. Maybe the thumbs can lightly touch the sternum. And we will breathe in and out together. And then inhaling for one arm. Allowing a very gentle bow of your head towards your heart and lifting the heart area up towards the head. Allowing us to focus for a moment on kindness. With that, Ahimsa on violence. And especially in combination with Satya, that is the truth. So I invite you to bring all of those concepts into your practice and then also take them out into your day. There is a truth we all hold within us and there's a time to speak this truth out aloud, not holding back, but considering other people's truths as well so that your words are non-harming and always filled with kindness. As you take your next inhalation, let your hands drift apart, keep your elbows bent, lift your heart even more, maybe lift your gaze and if you like you can open the eyes. And as you're breathing out, just rotating your shoulders forward, rounding your back and tucking the chin in. And as you next inhale, open up again, squeeze your shoulder blades a little bit more, lift your heart a tiny bit further. And when you're breathing out, just rounding again, tucking the chin in. We'll do that three more rounds. Find your own pace. Your breath is full. It might take the breath right up to the collarbones. And when you're breathing out, we're rounding, tucking in and creating space in the back of our heart. On the inhale, open up. On the exhale, let's round it in. Have your last movement now. And then remain a little bit rounded in and maybe if you're sitting upon your heels or a block, place your hands down upon your thighs and then slide the hands down 
and touching the ground in front of you. And for a moment, just pausing here, bring some length into your spine. You might notice a slight lift away from the floor with the buttocks, depending on your seat. Leave your shoulders down, the neck in its neutral position, and pause for a moment, touching down to the earth connecting you to a grounded a place. Take an inhale from here. And as you're exhaling, slide your hands further forward, starting to lift your hips off the ground. You might want to remove the block that you had underneath. And then as you're next inhaling, a cat and cow movement, lifting tail and gaze. And when you're breathing out, starting from the tailbone, rounding your back. So on the in-breath again, the tailbone rises first. We're dropping belly, chest, and then lifting the gaze. And on the out-breath, the tailbone comes under. We're gradually rounding our back and maybe tucking the chin in. Let's do that one more time, just moving through the spine, inhaling and exhaling to round. Might pause in that rounded position and get your hips to move a bit from side to side. Maybe a circular movement around, and you could extend this movement for the whole body. Maybe circling around and bringing a little bit of stress, and with that engagement around your hands and wrists as well. And then changing the direction. If that doesn't suit, you're always welcome to step onto fists instead of your hands. Now, from this place, let's center ourselves on this all four stance. On the inhalation, let the right leg extend backwards, flexing through the foot so the toes are facing down. And then reaching forward with the left arm and here the thumb is pointing upwards. Inhale here, holding. Exhaling, draw elbow, knee and nose together underneath. Let's do two more of those. Breathe in, lengthen the body, reach forward into arm, back into your leg and exhale, roll it under on your out breath. One more time, inhaling as you're lengthening. And exhaling as you're rounding. Inhale again to bring length in. Open and stretch out your body, holding the balance. When you next inhale, open your arm and leg out to opposing sides. And as you breathe out, bring them back in. We'll do that twice more. On the inhale, open out. On the exhale, Extend. Last one, breathe in. Breathe out. Releasing your hand down, releasing your knee down. And now we're having a stretch back towards the heels, allowing the arms to stay extended, the hips reaching back towards the heels. If the head is hovering off the ground, that's perfectly fine. Maybe for some, the head is resting on the floor. Let your forearms then lower down onto the mat and kind of slither along the floor, lying down onto the front of your body, leaving the forearms on the ground just for a swing pose. The elbows will be resting underneath the shoulders, pressing down into the tops of the feet. Uh, take your pubic bone and tuck that slightly away from the floor, engaging a bit more into your core muscles. Lift out of your shoulders and open your heart again. Let it reach forward and take a deep breath. You completed this breath. Inhale again. Maybe the elbows are coming off the floor. Maybe you're able to extend this. This is only an option. And as you breathe out, spread the elbows out and release the forehead to the mat. Let your hands come back beside the ribs. Push back up onto all fours as you take an inhale. Establish yourself, readjusting the knees to hip distance, the hands to shoulder distance. 
And when your neck's breathing, you let your left leg extend backwards. Flex the foot, the toes are pointing down so the hip is aligned. And when you're ready, your right arm might extend forward, the thumb can turn up towards the ceiling. We're pausing here for a moment, enjoying the little bubbles as they arise. We're breathing in for length. And we're breathing out to draw elbow knee together, rounding the back. Two more from here, breathe in, stretch out your back, lengthen forward, out to the heel and exhale, round the back again, curl it in. One more, take a breath. And exhale to curl it in. Now when we're inhaling, we're extending once more. And now we're changing that, same as on the other side, open leg, arm to opposite side. And when you're breathing out, realigning again. Inhaling to open out to the sides, leg and arm if possible, and exhale, bring that back in. Last one. So bringing in a little bit of strength to the practice. And once you're back in the normal shape, let us release the hand down the knee down, and this time we keep our hips right over um, our knees. And if that works for you, you will slowly walk your hands forward, keeping the hips, as I said, over the knees and starting to lower. If you can lower the forehead down and encourage the center of the chest towards the mat. Please feel free to move a little bit backwards if that is too much stress on your shoulders. It could be you could play around a little bit with the shoulder, draw one back and still open your heart down towards the floor. This is Anahata Asana or the heart opener pose. Let's remain in this shape for a couple more breaths. When you completed those breaths, you might step back up onto the hands and slide back just briefly towards the heels so the back of the heart can open. And if you want to do that more deeply, you could rest your arms in a child's pose, Ubalasana, by the sides where the hands are next to the feet. Take another deep breath and see if you can expand your heart upwards towards the ceiling. And maybe finish this breath with a sigh out to curl inwards. One more breath like this. And then extending the arms again towards the front end of the mat. And inhale now to come up onto all fours. Tuck your toes under. You're welcome to stay on all fours or breathe out and lift the knees off the floor, finding your first downward facing dog. And you might start to pedal into the legs. That is to bend one knee and encourage the opposite heel towards the ground. If you find this movement is beneficial for yourself, you could swing your hips a little bit and create a bigger movement, um, similar to what we might have done on all fours at the very beginning, just exploring yourself within movement. Then take this movement and walk your feet to the front end of the mat. Once you reach there, come into Ardha Uttanasana, half lift. Hands might press against the shins or the thighs. Trying to pause here for a moment. Feel into your shoulders. Can you draw them backwards? So we're creating like a tabletop with our backs. And my hands have just come up a lot higher to accommodate that. But please feel free to stay lower. Take one more breath in here. And then soften the knees a little bit more and fold down as you're breathing out. Let your head release down towards the mat, taking an inhale from there. And then as you're breathing out, begin to roll up slowly into standing. 
Once we're standing up, we'll practice what we've done before seated. Let's open the arms, squeeze the shoulder blades a little bit together, opening your gaze up. And then as we're breathing out, we'll bring the hands together in front of the chest. Just a little reminder today to tap back into kindness. And this kindness, although I make it all about others at the moment, is um, so important to spread out into whatever is happening out there currently. Uh, allowing yourself to be kind, giving yourself permission to respond with kindness to whatever is happening at the moment. And with that, it does ripple back to ourselves. So with your next inhalation, let's lift the arms back up, extend the heart towards the sky. And when you're breathing out, let's bring the hands back to the heart and step the right foot deep into a lunge, softening through the back knee, but keeping your hips facing forward. Repeat the full movement from sitting. So while you're breathing, elbows open, chest wide. And as you're breathing out, round your shoulders foot. If you like, you can touch the backs of the hands together, bend and sink into your lunge. And on the in-breath then, opening up again, squeezing the shoulder blades. And when you're breathing out, rounding the back, maybe touching the backs of the hands together, maybe sinking with the knee towards the floor. Let's repeat that for three more rounds, finding your own pace as you inhale open, and as you exhale, round it forward. So we're still moving into openness of the heart, front and back. When you come to your last one though, and you're starting to round the body forward. Let your hands land on the mat. Step the front foot back into your downward facing dog or Adho Mukha Svanasana. And when you take your next inhale, let's roll this forward into Kumbhakasana or the plank. And you might lower your knees down, untuck your toes. And on the hour breath then, descending towards the ground, keeping your elbows nice and close and snug in as you release towards the mat. You might even place the forehead down momentarily. Keep your hands underneath the shoulders or slightly further back. Ground down actively through the tops of the feet. And when you're inhaling, then lifting again the upper body, just lightly, avoiding to use too much pressure into your hands and rather again, opening your heart. I'm just drawing my shoulder blades back and down the spine. Let's take another breath in to hold. And as you're breathing out, pushing the floor away, beginning to round your back, tuck your toes though, and reach your hips up and back for a puppy shape. This is your alternative to a downward facing dog or the other alternative in all four stands. If you want more, lift your knees off the floor and come into downward facing dog. If you still need to move that dog, allow it to. Being kind to yourself as well. What is it when we're forcing, when we're enforcing our opinions on ourselves, the opinion of what a down dog is? or when we're enforcing our opinion on others, we are causing traction. And uh, today I would love you to be really, really kind, not just to others, but also to yourself. Let us take a breath in. If you're ready to lift your right leg up into the air, and with the out breath, then draw your knee and your nose together underneath and round your back. And as you breathe in, extend out through the heel of the foot. And when you're breathing out, draw all of that back in together. One more, take a breath in as you're extending. 
and on the out breath, curl it in. Now stepping the right foot forward between the hands, but also lowering your left knee down towards the mat. Untuck the back toes, lean your hips a little bit back and draw your hands with you. Lifting the sole of the front foot off the floor and now push out through the ball of the foot. And then on your next exhale, gently lower your head towards the front leg. We're not really sitting back here. This is a take on half Hanuman or Ada Hanumanasana. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. You're pressing forward through the ball of the foot. If you don't know why we're doing that, just stop it and see how it feels then. And then breathing out to lower that little bit more. With your next breath in, bending the front knee again, landing once more on the front foot. Your hand slight forward to frame this foot, lifting the back knee now off the mat, extending potentially out to the heel, but also drawing back with the right hip at the same time. So nice and long spine, take another breath here. And then as you're breathing out, step the foot forward and straight into Uttanasana, you're standing forward there. Let your hands slide up, half lift, inhale. Exhale to fold again. We'll take this one slowly again, waiting for the out breaths and rolling ourselves up into standing. Cactus arms as you arrive and breathe in to open your front. And then breathing out as you gently touch the hands back together, landing in your mountain pose. Thumbs might lightly touch the sternum, steady your gaze. And keep the eyes open. Repeating the movement. While you take an inhale, open yourself up. And as you're exhaling, hands returning to the heart and we're stepping the left foot back quite deeply into a lunge. Bring some softness into the back knee. Make sure your hips are at ease and facing forward. I'm going back to the same movement. As we breathe in, shoulder blades come close, we're opening. With the out breath, roll your shoulders forward, maybe touching the backs of the hands together, maybe sinking into the lunge a little bit more. And as you're inhaling, opening again. Breathing out to round. You can sink as deep into the lunge as feels right for you. Three more to go. Breathe in as you squeeze your shoulder blades. Open the front of the heart. And then rotate your shoulders forward and open the back of the heart on the out breath. Two more to go. After your last repetition, you will stay rounded then and reach your hands towards the ground. Once the hands are down on the mat, step your foot back, either to downward facing dog or to puppy form. When you're breathing in, rolling forward, back into our plank, maybe supported with the knees on the floor. Be strong in the upper back, as we're encouraging space between the shoulder blades. And when you're breathing out, your core remains on your elbows, nice and close as we lower once more all the way down onto the floor. Pressing back down into the tops of the feet, inhaling, lifting again into a cobra. This time you can choose to either keep hands softly grounded or lift them off the floor or to extend your back bend using the hands, mind, shoulders and elbows, shoulders down, elbows by your sides. One more breath. And inhale again. 
And when you're breathing out, find your way back either into puppy or maybe using puppy as a transitioning shape and extending the legs into a downward facing dog. You're welcome once again to move or to find the stillness. Just listening into the body. Remember that you are important and that we can only share what we incorporate in our lives ourselves. Make sure there's space between the shoulder blades, there's space around your neck. Now with the next inhale, lifting the left leg up and with the out breath then drawing nose knee together underneath rounding your back. On the inhale, extend out through the heel and we'll do that again, breath out, round in. Inhaling, extending once more. Exhaling, curl it in and this time if it's happening, bring the foot forward between the hands or help it there. Lower the back knee down towards the ground, untuck the back toes. Slide your hands a little bit back and lift the sole of the front foot off the ground. Pressing out through the ball of the foot as we breathe in and on the out breath then <laughs> lowering your head towards your front leg. We'll stay here for a moment, checking in with yourself. Where can you feel the support of this shape? How does it feel to push forward through the ball of the foot? What alternatives are there for you and how do they feel in comparison? Are your shoulders relaxed? Then let us slowly lower the front foot back down, framing with the fingertips on the floor. You might choose to tuck the back toes under, lift that knee off the ground and encourage the right heel backwards while you align the left hip again with the right. So usually the left hip pulls a little bit back as well, keeping the length in your spine as you breathe in. And when you're breathing out, step it forward, back down into Uttanasana. On the inhale, come to a half lift. On the exhale, folding back down. And then very slowly on your next out breath again, rising up into standing. Let's take the inhale again, open the heart. And then touching the hands together as you breathe out, steadying yourself in the mountain form. If you prefer your arms by the sides, that's the other option now. Lifting all the toes off the floor, feeling the engagement of the feet and gently allowing the toes to land again on the mat while keeping the strength in your legs. We will shift our weight a little bit over towards our left foot and bringing our right knee to bend and open it out for a tree pose or rikshasana. You could slide your foot up all the way. You could even help your foot to the inner thigh. If you're choosing the higher point, please press the thigh back into the foot. And I would encourage all of you to feel that action of moving inwards so that the hip starts to lengthen out no matter where your foot is. From there, could you extend the arms, extending up into the crown of your tree? And if that doesn't feel too brilliant for the shoulders, maybe Jana Mudra touching index thumbs together and opening the arms out into branches. As some of you might be aware, trees are very connected. They're connected um, throughout their roots. So it's well worth to feel that groundedness through the foot. 
They're also having a strong connection to the light. And they can actually talk to each other. So from your tree, take an inhale, lift the arms again and lift your right knee up in front of you. And while you're breathing out, keep the foot in flexion, draw your hands towards your heart. We're transitioning into a warrior three. As the leg extends backwards, keep the foot in that flexion, pointing toes, hips towards the ground. My hands are resting in front of uh, the chest, but you could also extend your arms forward. Now point the back toes, bend into your standing leg, carefully land the foot down behind, bending your back knee now. And as you're inhaling, extend the arms again. The hands can separate if you prefer, and we're settling into this lunge. Taking an inhale. And as you're exhaling, let yourself twist towards the left and let your arms just come out to shoulder height. Keep the palms of your hands facing upwards. Happy to receive kindness from others. Your choice from here to place your back hand gently into your lower back and to lift up through the front hand. If you like, you can sink a little bit deeper into the lunge and with the hand of the upper hand now reaching up and back, we're creating a bit more space in the front of our hips. And hopefully with that space goes that last bit of angriness that we might have. So let's take a deep breath. And with the out breath now, let's reach down. You can reach down to the top of the thigh and stay there, or you can reach down towards the floor. The hand can stay in the lower back as you roll your shoulder back. Maybe your gaze is lifted. If it is, have a little chin tuck there. And if you don't find the arm behind your back is engaging enough, maybe extending the arm backwards, spreading out through the fingers. Inhale. And as you exhale, let the back hand swing down by the side of the foot. Lower the back knee again towards the ground, untuck the toes. We're repeating the half Hanuman as you slide your fingers back, pressing out through the ball of the foot and lowering the nose towards the leg. Keep the shoulders in their sockets. If any of you feel like, oh yeah, I really need this right now, you can come onto fists and slide the heel out in front, approaching full Hanuman without looking for an outcome other than some length and openness into your body. When you are ready, slide the front foot back, coming up onto your hands and your knees. And a couple of cat and cows as you inhale, open the front. And when you're exhaling, rounding your back. One more, take a breath in and a breath out to round. Using the roundedness to stretch into an extended child's pose. While you're inhaling, then roll it up. Your choice to tuck toes under, make it a full plank or stick with the kneeling plank. Inhaling, exhaling, slowly lower, Chaturanga. Maybe there's a cobra, maybe there's an upward facing dog on your inhale. And then releasing that back to downward facing dog on the exhale. Please to um, come down to the knees if that feels better for you. Let's take this moment to pause. 
if you're in the down dog, allow your knees to be soft and let your tailbone reach right up and back. Then create the space around your shoulder blades, rolling open so you have a feeling as if your neck is visible. Let's take the next inhale and lift the right leg up. And with your elbows, drawing your knee forward and maybe placing the foot back into the front. Soften through your back knee as you inhale and let your body collapse into this lunge. And as you're breathing out, rolling up into standing. And while you breathe in, open your heart again. And then step the foot forward as you touch your hands together. And please feel free to choose here, hands staying at the heart for mountain or the arms down by the sides for it. Lifting through your toes again, just reconnecting to the floor underneath you. And then let the toes land on the floor in their gentle touch and keep your feet active. We're already preparing to bring roots down into the earth. As we're shifting the weight towards the right, bending and opening the left knee this time. Notice how you're feeling. There's no need to come into a certain form, but you might. And maybe this side is the same as the other in your experience and you would like to place the foot back to that same position here. If it is the inner thigh, please encourage that thigh to move against the foot and for all to lengthen through the side of uh, the hip here. Welcome to hold your rikshasana tree like this, or you can take a breath in and lift the arms. And if that feels right, or it doesn't, you can stay there or open the arms into branches. And I tend to touch index and thumbs together for Dhyana Mudra, just to allow myself a better focus and concentration. Thinking about connectedness, being connected through the elements. We all stand on that same earth. We're all breathing in the same air and we all can reach up to the same sky. With the next breath in, let's lift the arms and lift the knee and bringing the hands back to the heart as we're stepping the foot back into a lunge. Taking an inhale as we're extending again. And an exhale as we open the arms out. Leave the palms facing up in this twist as you're looking over towards the right side. Notice any nasty twisting in the hips and maybe balance that out in more strength in your stance. The palms open. Again, be prepared, but only to receive kindness. Taking your back hand as an option and place that into your lower back as a support. And if it feels good, lift through the front arm. Maybe lowering a little bit deeper into the lunge. But we're creating space now in front of the left hip. The arm stretching up towards the sky. With the next exhale, keep your hand in your lower back, but take the upper hand and either place that to your thigh for a twist or reach with your fingertips to the floor for this twist. Let your right shoulder roll open and either stay here or extend back into the right hand, spreading out through the fingers. Let the back hand swing down to the side of the foot. 
Lower your knee down to the mat, untuck your toes, let your hands slide back as we return to Hanuman. Half version here, as you can stay there, pressing out to the ball of the foot. Or coming deeper, maybe resting to your fists and then sliding the heel forward as you come into a deeper version of the splits <laughs> or Hanumanasana. Allowing yourself to explore whatever version you've come into, the space you're creating, also the places that hold you back a little and acknowledging those with kindness, maybe adjusting your form. To come out, slide the foot back, Bring your knee onto the ground and have a cat pose as you breathe out. The cow shape as you inhale, lifting tail and gaze. And again, stretch up your back. Leaning briefly back towards the heels into the extended child's pose. Your choice now of sliding along your mat or coming with me on the inhale to all fours, moving forward into kneeling or full plank. On the exhale, start lowering, knees on or off the mat, halfway down to Chaturanga all the way. Up dog or cobra as you breathe in and retreating back into your puppy or downward facing dog. Taking uh, this flow today into that inner place where we're creating strength. And from this strength, we can open our hearts taking it into kindness. With your next inhale, let us lift the left leg. On the out breath, bring the knee in towards the chest. And maybe landing the foot forward, lengthening through the spine as you breathe in, and then collapsing the shape as you're breathing out, and then rolling up your back from here, opening up through the chest, the arms, extension of the lungs. And then stepping the foot forward as you bring your hands together, allowing yourself once again to center in this mountain form. Now I'm aware that something got forgotten. <laughs> so I will transition you with this forgotten piece. While we take a breath in, let's lift our left knee again, flexing through the foot. And then take the hands back to the heart and very slowly take this into a warrior three. We'll hold this warrior three for a moment. Toes facing down. If you want to extend your arms forward or out to the sides, these are all welcome variations. We'll then uh, point the foot, but we will cross our leg behind the other and land it down onto the floor. Taking an inhale as we're reaching the arms back up towards the ceiling, left leg behind the right. And as you breathe out, bring your hands to the heart and twist a little bit more to the left. And then inhale, center yourself again. Now let's soften the knees and breathe out to fold down. 
If your hands don't quite reach the floor, you might use a block or rest your hands onto your shins. We use this as a standing forward bend with a little twist. Leave your shoulders slightly lifted and experiment with leaning the weight a little bit forward towards your toes. So the tailbone might come higher. Bending your knees a little bit more. Rolling up as you're breathing out. Stepping your feet next to each other as you breathe in and open your hands. And as you're breathing out, touching the palms of the hands together. We won't have a warrior three on the other side to keep ourselves in balance, but we'll step our right foot now behind the left. On the inhale, extending the arms up. On the exhale, bring your hands together and turn towards the right into a gentle standing twist. On the inhale, reach your arms back up, turn to the front. Knees might be soft as you breathe out and fold down. And again, we will stay in this standing forward bend, your nose moving in the direction of your knees. The shoulders lightly lifted as we pause here. Noticing what it feels like to bring the weight forward within the feet. More breaths. Then let's come onto the fingertips, uncrossing the legs and bending our knees deeply so we can lower down to sit. Let your legs extend out in front of you. Take a breath in. Hands might gently rest upon your thighs as you're sitting tall. And then draw your right knee up towards you. You can keep the foot here on the inside of the leg or you could cross your foot over. Keeping the leg long this morning as you point your toes up towards the ceiling. Let your right hand fingertips land behind your back. Keep the left hand on your knee. Inhale to stay upright. And as you breathe out, you might deepen by bringing your knee into your elbow as you come into a twist. Close the eyes, relax the shoulders. Breathe in fully. Breathing out, slowly engaging your lower abdomen and maybe this out breath takes you a little deeper into the twist without much force, just strength. Let's repeat this breath one more time. And then to release that on the inhale, only bring your head to face forward. And then releasing your twist, and let the right leg come to the front. Hands might gently rest upon the thigh, lifting yourself up tall as you breathe in. And then drawing in the left knee as you're breathing out. You can leave the foot just resting there on the inside of the leg, or you can cross it over to the outside of the leg, leaving the toes of the extended leg pointing up it and placing your left hand fingertips behind. Right hand is on the knee as we inhale, aiming to sit up straight. And you could slide your elbow to the knee while you're breathing out and coming into your twist, leaving the shoulders relaxed. Maybe the eyes are closing. Inhaling. And exhaling, use the lower abdomen, gently helping you into the twist. Do that for one more breath. Then with the next inhale, bring your head to the front. With the hour breath, unraveling the shape and extending both legs out to the front. Please um, gather everything around you, including 
jumpers, socks, and whatever else might be required for you to become comfortable in a moment. Leaving your legs out in front. And when you're ready, lifting the arms out in front as well. Take an inhale. And as you're breathing out, start rounding from your lower back. Please keep breathing in and out gently through the nose and lower down very slowly. If you're already lying down, congratulations. If you're still with me, you hold that inner strength until your back is landing on the floor. Let your arms just for a moment fall away from the body, becoming a little bit more effortless. Then stepping your feet down onto the ground. Readjusting your back if needed. Then lift your knees up and open them over your shoulders. Take your hands and squeeze them a little bit closer towards the shoulders. Holding your knees here, but releasing your hands and sliding the hands to the backs of the thighs. So the knees are still wide as we lift our ankles and place them right above our knees. Light uh, dorsiflexion into the ankle, so the, toe, the soles of the feet are pointing upwards. And this is a modified happy baby. If you like, you can stay here and help with your hands to draw your knees towards the outside of the shoulders. If you want to deepen, bring both of your arms to the insides of your knees and reach for the outer edges of the feet keeping the back of the neck long. So in other words, in all cases, your ankles are over your knees and where your hands are is up to you. And we're encouraging the knees to come down just outside of the shoulders. So nice and wide, promoting a little bit more openness through the hips. And as always, if anything doesn't feel good, please come back to the beginning and uh, find your way into a suitable shape for yourself. I've started rocking here just a little from side to side. And that's your option too. A very light inversion that also allows a bit of hip opening. Let your feet move now in towards each other. Bring your knees together over the chest and you can lower your feet down one at a time or both at the same time using inner strength. And I encourage you to let your arms fall open straight away. If you're feeling ready for relaxation, we've basically completed the practice here, but if there's any other movement that you need, please have that. And you can either come into constructive resting pose afterwards, stepping feet apart and letting knees fall in, or you can extend yourself into full Shavasana. And the legs are out long and the toes are rolling away and pointing outwards. Become now as comfortable as you can possibly be within this shape. Allowing yourself to be warm. The body fully surrendering to the ground. Maybe noticing if this feels rather light or heavy. Both is perfectly fine. And begin to tune in with your breath.
Noticing how the breath becomes softer, more gentle. And you might keep that gentle focus on the breath throughout the time in Shavasana. But you could also silently repeat the mantra for today, I am kind. I am kind. Let go now of your mantra. Noticing your body again on your mat. Very slightly begin to deepen your breath. Bringing some very gentle movements back to your body if you choose to. If you prefer to stay resting here. If so, if you do want to complete the practice together with me, maybe have a few stretches. When you are ready, you could either sit up over the front of your body or gently roll over to your side. And you arrive in your seated form, resting your hands down by the sides. And if your arms are long enough or you're sitting low enough, your palms touching the floor, reconnecting to the earth that we all share together. With the in-breath, reaching up through the air to the sky that we share. And then we'll draw our hands down in front of the heart, the thumbs again lightly touching the sternum, leaving yourself nice and tall for now as we complete our practice with one Om followed by three Shantis. Let's inhale and exhale together. Inhaling for the Om. Ah uh, Shanti 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 Lifting the heart to the head, slightly bowing the head towards the heart to bring kindness to each other. Namaste. Namaste.